Everyone that plays Overwatch, regardless of rank, has a certain selection of heroes that they gravitate towards. Be it that you consider yourself a support expert or a DPS main at heart, everyone has a preference. Some have considerably larger hero pools than others, meaning that they can be flexible in any given team, swapping to various roles when need be. Both supports are caught together. That's what they need, but Carpe strikes in again. Striking down, Kellex also being removed. Carpe, what are you doing? This is unbelievable! He turns around and gets on the point! Conversely, there are those that dedicate their time to absolutely mastering their prowess on a niche handful of heroes, or perhaps just a single character, period. Players of this nature offer an incredibly intriguing dynamic to the Overwatch League where teams are able to build a roster of up to 12. What are the benefits of having a smaller roster of players who can flex to various compositions at will, as opposed to having a roster of diverse yet specific talent and simply substituting in players when need be? Well, we see an assortment of both throughout the league. NYXL, for instance, the most dominant team by no small margin, currently competes with a roster of 9 players and does an exceptional job of rotating everyone in and out depending on a multitude of factors. They're strategizing in regards to which lineup is best on particular maps, which squad is the most consistent against certain opposition, and so on and so forth. On the other hand, we have a team like the Houston Outlaws who do indeed rotate their core lineup to suit the maps in play, but also make use of a rare resource in the league, a specialist. Spree, a member of the Outlaws who has seen just over 2 hours of total playtime in the league, has remained on Zarya 78% of that time. He's a specialist not only in the fact that he has by far the highest Zarya pick rate and playtime of any competitor in the league, but more specifically, he can be considered a specialist in that of his 2 hours and 25 minutes on stage, he spent an hour and 37 minutes exclusively in King's Row. Similarly, since joining his former World Cup teammates, Fact Fiction has perhaps unsurprisingly exclusively played Winston with more than 90 minutes of playtime. Whilst you would certainly assume that other teams sort of have the upper hand when loading into a map against one of the two specialists in focus, on paper they know for certain one of the elements that they're going to encounter when the first teamfight comes around and should be able to anticipate what comes with it, building their own counter compositions accordingly. In actuality though, perhaps the most fascinating aspect of this particular discussion is that most lineups still have no answer. There's Moomin dropping that Earth Shatter, there's a charge onto the Transcendence, oh and he's gonna knock him off, what an angle from Mooma just dropping Jonak. King's Row remains the fourth strongest map across all stages for the Outlaws with a current record of 6 wins and 3 losses. In fact, they stand as the roster with the third best record on King's Row of any team in the league, just behind NYXL and the LA Gladiators. Spree's efficiency on his chosen hero is certainly the leading factor that gives Houston an edge going into King's Row. His teamfight win rate as Zarya is the third highest in the league, an absolutely staggering fact when you consider that his playtime entirely dwarfs the majority of other tank specialists. On one hand, it's undeniable just how significant Spree truly is for the Outlaws, but to counter that point, we have to consider that King's Row isn't always going to be a map in rotation. The first and third stages saw entirely different map pools, so throughout that period of time, you have this incredibly talented player, more or less unable to fulfill his role. Because let's not forget that Spree was once a D.Va main on his teams prior to the Overwatch League. So it's fascinating to question whether Spree could be benefiting another team in the future by consistently performing on his earlier main, and then simply swapping to Zarya when a certain map appears in rotation or when a meta necessitates her use. Take Space for example, a recent star for the LA Valiant. He's able to play both Zarya and D.Va to an exceptionally high level. Perhaps Spree could benefit more from being on a different roster without a cemented D.Va main to compete with for stage time. But conjecture aside, speaking of the LA Valiant, another example to help expand the argument is Bunny, a Tracer specialist formerly of the Soul Dynasty now competes for the Valiant who currently sit as the top team in the Pacific Division. Whilst he is unquestionably one of the best performing Tracers in the league, perhaps Soul traded him due to his extremely limited flexibility. With a Tracer pick rate of 96% throughout his time with the Soul Dynasty and a 98% pick rate throughout his stint with the Valiant thus far, Bunny holds by far the highest Tracer pick rate amongst his peers and has one of the most shallow hero selections of any player in the league. Similar to Spree of the Outlaws, there's a reason why he sees limited playtime and a reason as to why he hasn't appeared on stage at all throughout the fourth and final stage. Obviously, given the introduction of Brigitte and a shift in meta of late, whilst Tracer is still a perfectly appropriate hero in certain situations and does see some play, most dive-centric compositions can be countered more efficiently now than ever before, hence why we see her pick rate drop from the season average of 70% to just under 40% here in stage 4. 
Almost every other DPS specialist in the league is capable of adjusting mid-match and swapping onto a different hero without losing much efficiency in the process. That's where Soon comes in for the LA Valiant. Whilst he's not per se the most dominant Widowmaker or the most exceptional Tracer in the league, he's certainly capable of holding his own against some of the best in the world. Scattered. Soon a little bit low health, trying to find the pick. Oh! oh, what? Wow. And that added flexibility is precisely why he is getting stage time over Bunny. He's able to read a situation and adjust accordingly, whereas Bunny simply doesn't have that luxury. Now given that Bunny has only performed on 3 heroes other than Tracer for a collective 5 minutes since joining the Valiant, with 30 seconds of that time coming from Torb, it's certainly safe to say that he hasn't quite demonstrated an ability to adapt at the very highest level. But that's not to entirely discredit Bunny though, perhaps he is exceptional on other various heroes, maybe his coaching staff are the ones advising him to essentially never swap. You can never be too sure, and to his credit, he remains amongst the top 10 tracers in the league across a plethora of statistics, so do take that for what it's worth. It's a fascinating topic of conversation, especially in the current landscape of the league where a brand new meta has thrown a wrench in the works for numerous teams, and even more intriguing when considering the prospect of expansion in the coming seasons. It's inevitable that we're going to see a few new teams introduced in early 2019, and with that, comes the potential for monumental trades as teams attempt to develop the most appropriate rosters for the competition ahead. Will we see an increase of value placed on the contracts of those who are more capable of flexing over to a wide assortment of heroes, or will some still continue to emphasize specialists, those that excel greatly but in rather limited fields? Do let me know your thoughts in the comments down below, but as always, thanks for tuning in, I hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.